If you've ever watched a film and thought, how did they come up with something that looks that cool? Or how did they choreograph an action scene to look like that? Then you're probably thinking about storyboards. Storyboards are the visual blueprints to a film. Today's guest, David Harlan Rousseau, tells the story of how he came to work in the industry. He's the co-author of the book Storyboarding Essentials and teaches at the Savannah College of Art and Design and was my professor when I was in school. When David was young, he saw the behind the scenes specials on TV of how they made films and his curiosity in the craft took off. Okay, so I had seen Star Wars in 1978 in the theater uh, and I think I was nine years old when it came out, eight or nine. Um, and yeah, so which is what a magical time to see that movie. Uh, and we're talking about a new hope at this point. And what a time, what a magical age to see that movie. There wasn't really anything like it. And science fiction beforehand was just pretty, pretty comical. You, know, you could still see wires on spaceships as things are flying through a star field that was clearly a painted backdrop. But this is different. This was really, really different. And you, you, understood what it was you understood the relationship between that movie and westerns and samurai films really weren't hitting it big in the u.s at that time but westerns were still pretty popular in the, in the consciousness but george lucas as he was taking ilm made a point of every once in a while working with the networks where they had a sort of behind the scenes special and i somehow got to watch it and they're showing all these these great images of storyboards by Joe Johnston uh, and and uh, Malo and others. Uh, Joe Johnston, of course, who would go on later on to direct The Wolfman and Captain America and, and things like that. He started off as a production artist and they're showing his first storyboards and they're okay. But when you're a kid, like if you, if you compared the storyboards then to storyboards now, the they were straight to the point. Now they're, they were a little bit more illustrative perhaps because of technology. They were figuring out as they went along, how do I solve this creative puzzle? And so it wasn't like they were going to school for it. They might have learned a little bit about uh, sculpting, perhaps, but there was no stop motion school when these folks were trying to figure it out. And they were all trying to work together. They had to invent new equipment, new technologies, new ways of telling stories. That's pretty inspirational stuff. You know, when you're a creative kid, you don't, necessarily have all the focus in the world but when you do find that you're focused on certain things and you can't stop learning about it that's a good sign that's 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 letting you know that you should probably listen to that mm -hmm. you know especially if you're younger if you're if you are a, a younger um artist younger creative person really truly pay attention to what it is that you're locking on to that that captures your imagination and captures your enthusiasm because that's that's the world trying to tell you something. I really took very few formal art courses. And so I, I just started drawing on my own more and more and more. And I learned a lot there. Um, there are some things that I wished I had done, like as far as more formal training, as opposed to being self-taught. And But let's be honest, you're always self-taught. You mm -hmm. have guides, you have coaches, uh, you have these sorts of mentors in your life you know, colleagues and friends who encourage you and inspire you. But the reality of it is you still are teaching yourself. And if you're not teaching yourself, you're probably not curious enough to want to do this as a profession anyway. I triple majored in liberal arts, writing and communications. And while there, there was a couple of independent filmmakers up there. He was doing an independent film and wanted storyboard artist. I'm like, I can do that. I'd never done it before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and and just said i'm just yeah i could do it and i totally did it and i put together some concept art and i put together some storyboards i have no idea where these documents are because this is all before the the interwebs i mean people say that the industry is hard to get into and it is and it's not you can get into the industry but you have to be willing to come in at a much lower level and that said once you prove yourself you, you move up pretty quick you start uh, out as a PA and, and then you get to know people and then you build up some clout you get some some recognition that you're a hard worker you're, that you showed up early you stayed late and when people were asking you to do something 
you didn't roll your eyes. You didn't smack your teeth. You you went ahead, you did the job, and you did it to the best uh, that you could according to the instructions that you were given, but you did it with a good attitude. And that's where people start to notice you. That's where they start to realize this person has that spark. They have that professional attitude, that professional mindset. They want to do more with you. You know, like, well, here's an example of that. I had a small part on, on the asylum film. <laughs> I love this movie, though. I love it. I love it. It's, it's got a very strong cult following. Abraham Lincoln versus zombies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that one. Yep. I'm in there as this Confederate zombie chained to a wall. and But things go wrong, and I get shot in the head. <laughs> Because I got to be like in men in shackles and then get shot in the head. It's like it's like a kid's dream come true. You know, I grew up on like <laughs> horror movies and sci-fi. So I'm taking all this blood and stuff off my I'm trying to wash off as best I can. And then I went back and I was looking at the call sheet and I said, wait a minute, you've got 60 extras coming in tomorrow who are all going to be zombies. Do you need some help with that? Because I'm looking around. There weren't many people on the crew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you need somebody to help with that? And I was like, well, yeah, it'd be great if you could help, but we don't have any more in the budget. I'm like, you know what? I, I've got time. And, and a lot of my friends were working on this, on this shoot. I'll do it if you give me the credit of zombie wrangler. So I, I totally agreed to, to do that. Um, and so that was so day one. I, that's when I got shot in the head and the day two <laughs> I'm helping out. Yeah, you know, and and moving the zombies around, and it, and at one point I remember asking a question: Are these Night of the Living Dead zombies, or or like, you know, twenty eight days later zombies? Yeah, you know, which which zombies is it? And they're like, Oh, Night of the Living Dead. But but somebody on there, like I can see the expression on their face went, Oh, okay, this guy seems to know what he's talking about. And they saw the way that I was corralling all these people. So at the end of day two of shooting, because it's only seventeen day shoot, mind you. At the end of day two of shooting. Um, the first AD came up and said, you, know, you you did a really good job today. Yeah, thanks. Well, I wonder if you could help me out. Okay, what you got? Well, our second AD quit, and I need oh. a second AD, and you did a, such a good job today. I mean, are you interested in that? Like, I have no idea what I'm doing, uh, if, you know, but I'm willing to help. If you give me some, tell me what I'm supposed to be doing, I'll do that. And next thing you know, day three, I'm now second AD. <laughs> and, and, it was only, and, and it was really only because I... One said yes to opportunities that I think most people in common wisdom would have said no to. And I also think it was because uh, I showed up. And what I mean by that is I, di I didn't just arrive. It means I went there with a mindset that I'm going to do the best job I can give and and be there to serve others. And so on day two, that's when I really got noticed. And that's when I became you know second AD on this gig. And that Turned out to be a really exhausting but great experience. Like I said, 17 day shoot. Uh, and after that, you know, that kind of put my name on the radar of, you know, a lot of people who consistently work in the industry. That led to, oddly enough, some storyboarding opportunities. <laughs> I really don't want to sound like the guy on the front lawn, but I'm going to be doing this often, I think, is the mistake that a lot of young folks are making today is they can't wait to get back on their phones. So there's a minute of downtime on set, and all of a sudden, oh, here comes the phone. The opportunities are what's right in front of you. And so if you can maintain that mental discipline to shut up and pay attention when there's a down moment, you, know, you might find someone struggling over in some corner of the set. Sometimes even just walking up saying, do you need help with that? Might be the thing that gets you out of the department where you have nothing to do and puts you into an department where they need the help. Yeah, I was just about to ask. I'm like, okay, so what for people who might be interested in storyboarding, but they don't quite know how it works, they know there's drawings that represent the script to help the director, but can you walk through how that relationship works? Like, do you talk to the director and then do stuff? Do you pitch things to them? Do you read the script? Um, just, just give them a walkthrough of how that whole process works. I'm going to say what I say to everybody that asks similar questions is that every production is different. So what I do when I do storyboarding is I work on smaller independent films they come into town, they do a storyboard artist like yesterday for about two weeks, and they're they are down in dirty shooting boards. They're fast. They don't really want these beautiful illustrations. They just want to know where to point the camera. But my experience has been that a lot of the times I'm doing storyboards for projects before the cinematographer or director have even figured out their shot list. It doesn't always work that way. A lot of the times the director or cinematographer will have a shot list and they'll turn it over to a storyboard artist, and the storyboard artist will take the shot list and basically interpret that shot list 
with against the script and then create panels from that. I've been pretty lucky to be given somewhat free reign. And then I like, I'll get the storyboard. All right, we've got your shot list. Well, here are the storyboards. If you want me to, to rework them, I can. Then, then they look at the storyboards and like, oh, well, actually, this is what I was thinking too. So that's that's been a nice experience for me. I, I have gotten almost no revisions on the projects I've worked on uh, because I can understand what they're trying to say in the script. So I'll sit there and, you know, panel out things that, that's sort of in the rough stage. I, I don't do finished pretty boards because they never give me enough time or budget to do it. Uh, so I'll look at the script, but I'll do a script markup. I'll color code it. I'll use a highlighter method. I'll uh, underscore and box in certain things. And that really helps streamline the process. I'll write my framing heights and, and shot um, shots in the, in the margins near the action block. And that, then I turn those into some quick thumbnail sketches that really only I can read. <laughs> and it's <just> really <laughs> tiny. It just, it's shape, it's shape language. You know, it's like, oh, here's like this little rectangle with a circle is like that dude. Yeah. <laughs> and this weird looking box is that car. Um, and that weird shape is a horse. I don't know. But it's just <laughs> enough to block it in. So I so that when I actually sit down and can do something that's more coherent, then I'll put these drawings together. And then in big letters, I'll write the framing heights or whatever the camera notations are right underneath the panel and send those off as. Uh, a PDF, which the director most often than not is looking at on his smartphone. So you got to make the panels silhouette is everything. You got to make the panels stupidly easy to read. You got to, uh, clarity is more important than quality in some cases. Like it doesn't have to be a beautiful drawing. It just has to, where's the actor? Okay. What's around the actor? Is it, is, how many, how many principal performers do I have in this frame? Where are they in relationship to each other? Uh, how far away is the camera from the subject? You, all that can be communicated in a few lines on a page with the proper notation underneath. That helps them do their jobs really, really well, that they can actually look at the work and say, oh, OK. And then, of course, there's hair and makeup and, and, and all these sorts of things happening. And then, of course, then there's the camera and the director and everything else. So there's like six departments who have immediate need for this storyboard sequence. And as they get each shot done, there's my goofy little poorly drawn rough sketches. <laughs> and I say poorly drawn because they're quick. They were quick. They're super, super quick. They were basically rough quality. There, there wasn't me going for illustration. It was me going for clarity again. And as they get done each shot, they're drawing X's through and with a yellow highlighter of the shots that they already got. And then notations off to the side, this is B unit, you know, this is A. You know, so they had already divided up responsibilities of which camera crew was going to get which shots. And so they're putting all these notations on the boards. And so they're really meant for functionality. Those smaller projects gave me enough of a body work to show people that I could storyboard. Because of my experience in Abraham work, uh, Lincoln versus Zombies, you get to know people. And I got to know like the production designer and art director and people like that who went on to work on other projects. And next thing you know, I'm getting phone calls. Hey, this, this uh, feature film's in town. You want to, you want to work on that? You know, we need someone to do storyboards and you look at your calendar and you're like, yeah, yeah, I can do that. I can totally do that. Sure. Why not? Wasn't that much further along that I got another phone call. Hey, uh, we're working on this project. Uh, are you available? Sure. Um, how'd you find out about me? Because I am on the 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 database here in Savannah as a storyboard artist, you know, for the Savannah Film Commission. I am on their database, you know, as a local storyboard artist. And I thought, well, maybe it came from there. Like, nope. What I got was someone who was already working on the project who said, We need a storyboard artist. I know a guy. All of my jobs, all of them, all of them have come from referrals because I don't promote myself as a storyboard artist because I'm too busy teaching. So you've given lots of really solid advice here for beginners, but if they could leave this interview with one solid call to action, like one solid thing that they should take away from here and do today, what would that be? Oh, that is a good question. Uh, just, just one thing, man, 
Yeah. So they could take action today. What would that be? Uh, I honestly would probably just make a list as to why they want to be a storyboard artist. Why do you want to be a storyboard artist? Is it because you love drawing? That's that's good. Is it enough? Yeah, but make a list. Yeah. If if you if you have only one answer, then maybe you need to think a little longer about it. Do you love telling stories? Do you love to draw? Do you love communicating with others and helping others tell their stories? Because remember, with storyboarding, it ain't about you. It's about what you're doing to help others achieve their vision. That was David Harlan Rousseau. If you'd like to follow what he's been up to or get your hands on a copy of Storyboarding Essentials in your language, the link is in the description box below. The full version of this interview is available on Patreon. Thank you for listening and subscribe for more upcoming interviews with film industry professionals.